Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and we are continuing with the AP Calculus 2017 free response questions. Um, and so now we're on question number three, and um, this is the non calculator portion. So I gotta do everything by hand. Let's start with this. The function f is differentiable on the closed interval negative 6 to 5 and satisfies this equation. Okay, and I have the graph of f, the derivative here. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f, consists of a semicircle and three line segments, as shown in the figure above. Find the values of f of negative 6 and f of 5. Okay, so the relationship between f and f prime is that f is the antiderivative of the deriv of, of this, right? Like if the that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. I'm going to do the antiderivative of that. So, um, uh, what you, the way you would want to do something like this is f of x equals the integral from. Well, I'm going to write up to x. F of t dt, sorry, f prime. And then I have to decide what am I going to put down here. I'm going to do this because, and I'll explain why. Because you're given the initial value at negative 2, it's like we start at negative 2 at 7. And then we add up the relative areas under the curve to show like what the change would be. right? Because the, 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 the result of this integral here would be f of x minus f of negative 2. So I got to add the f of negative 2 to sort of get rid of it, right? By fundamental theorem of calculus, this would be f of x minus f of negative 2. So I'm going to add f of negative 2 to counteract that. So there's a few ways to think about it, and maybe that's like the most straightforward way. Um, so um, let's compute this. Well, f of negative 2 is 7. So this part is 7 plus this integral. Now this integral would be the area under the curve from negative 2 to x and in this case we're going to go with negative 6 so f of negative 6 is 7 plus the area between negative 2 and negative 6 now because the integral is going from right to left it's opposite right like this area would be positive area but because we're going right to left um, the area is really considered negative so what is the area under this this is 1 2 3 4 this is a width 4 this is a triangle of height 2. So the area of this, uh, 2 times 4 is 8 times 2. So the area of this here is 4. So I'm going to do 7 plus negative 4. Subtract 4 again, because this is positive area, but we're integrating from right to left. See, if we're integrating from left to right, it would be positive area. That makes this negative. So that makes this 3. OK, so f of negative 6 is 3. And then f of 5 is simply 7 plus the area from negative 2 to 5, which is this area here. Now, <clears throat> this part under the x-axis would be negative area. This is a semicircle with radius 2. So the area of the full circle would be 4 pi, right? Pi r squared. But because it's only half a circle, it's 2 pi. Now it's negative 2 pi because it's underneath, so I'm going to subtract 2 pi here. It's negative area because it's under the x-axis. And then this area is a triangle. The, the base of this triangle is width 3. The height of this triangle is 2. So the area under this triangle is um, 3. So plus 3. So f of 5 equals 10 minus 2 pi. So that's part A. Part B, on what intervals is f is increasing? F increases when the derivative is greater than 0. So when is the derivative greater than 0? It's whenever the function here is above the x-axis, right? Because that would mean, because this is the graph of f prime, and when f prime is greater than 0 is simply when I'm above the x-axis. So that is um, between negative 6 and um, negative 2. And I don't include the point negative 2 because when it's 0, it's not increasing. So right at 0, it's not increasing. So I would put a, I don't know how picky they're going to be about that. And then it's positive on this interval from 
uh, two, 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 three, four, five, two to five. Okay, so it's this interval. Find the absolute minimum value of f on the closed interval and justify your answer. Absolute minimum value of f, okay, is you're going to look at the the way you do absolute minimum is you find all the critical number values and you comp and you also compare the uh, endpoints and you see which one is the absolute smallest, okay. So first, let's find the critical numbers. Critical numbers are when the derivative is zero or undefined. F prime is defined everywhere here, so it's just equal to zero. It's equal to zero at x equals negative two, positive two, and um, five. And then we also include the endpoints negative negative six and five. So we need to look at these points x negative six, negative two, two, and five. And then I just want to compare which one's the smallest. Like the minimum has to occur either at a local minimum, which is what the critical numbers would give you candidates for, or it has to occur at the endpoints. Those are the two scenarios. So negative six and five are endpoints, negative two and two are critical numbers. Okay, so now we're gonna evaluate. Well, f of negative six we already solved was here, it was three. And we also compute f of five, which was 10 minus two pi. f of negative two, was given to us, that's seven. Now f of two is the only one we hadn't computed yet. Uh, f of two, you don't technically need to do this one, but I'll, I'll do this one. It's seven plus the area um, between here and here, so it's seven minus two pi. Okay, so this is seven minus two pi. So um, this is three, this is seven, so it can't be this one. 10 minus two pi, pi is like 3.1, it's so 6.2. 10 minus 6.2 is like three point something, so it's still bigger than this. Two times pi is like six point something. Seven minus six point something is like less than one. So this one has to be the smallest one, okay? So the absolute minimum value is here. <clears throat> then part D. Last part, let's see how much room I have. For each of f second derivative of negative five and f second derivative of three, find the value and, or explain why it doesn't exist. Okay, That's, th this is the derivative at negative five here. Negative five is here. So it's the second derivative. It's the derivative of the derivative. So the relationship is it's the derivative of this graph because this is the first derivative. So the derivative of this would be the second derivative. And the slope here at this point is just the slope on this point, which is, um, let's see, it goes down two and it goes over uh, four, so it's uh, minus one half. And then second derivative at three is here. This does not exist. There's no slope there. And the reason it doesn't exist is because the limit as x approaches three, like the slope from the right side and the left side are not the same. Um, so from the right side, it's equal to, uh, is it, well, I could just say it's not equal to the limit as x approaches three from the left. Because when I approach from the left, um, uh, it's this positive slope value. When I approach from the right, it's the negative slope value. So right at that point, doesn't have a derivative because the limit doesn't exist, okay? So let's take a look at how the scoring guidelines worked on number three here. Oops, let me scroll down to question three. Uh, three and 10 minus two pi uses the initial condition and evaluates each of these. Uh, it's increasing on these intervals. They put square brackets there I don't know why they put square, especially when they listed it with uh, the curved practice brackets there. So, you know, I, I don't think it matters. It, clearly they were not being too super pre precise on this. Um, the minimum value is that one. So I consider x equals two, that's a point for that. And then uh, the negative one half and does not exist. So good, got all the points on that one. So I guess, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. 
Um, please leave a comment, like, or subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next free response when we go through number four.